from the School of Māori and Indigenous Studies at Waikato University, Associate Professor Tom Roa joins us. Tom, g'day. Thanks for joining us. Hello. How are you? Kia ora. Kia ora. <laughs> Good to um, be here again, Pat. Yeah, great to have you, man. Listen, uh, we had a chat the other night about this story, and I'm calling it an interesting story because it's interesting to me. I'm, hopefully that's not a – I'm not trying to diminish the the, the importance of the story um, – about this German artist um, whose name is Gerd Stritzel, who has been to New Zealand, it would appear, as a tourist, who has a bit of a, a passion or a love or an affinity for Aotearoa New Zealand. And as a part of that, he has done some art, um, specifically of uh, Rangi McLean, um, and is selling it on the open market in Europe. And the response from Tuhoi is a copyright notice, a copyright infringement notice. So we sort of clunkily talked a bit about it, like how do you copyright someone's image? You know, if someone was doing a painting of Jacinda Ardern or of Joe Biden or of Shane Warne or of Richie McCaw, they'd probably sell it and there wouldn't be any conversation around it. But we don't have any understanding or experience or knowledge of the cultural aspect of this as well. So we thought, let's get on an expert, which is what we love to do, um, who is far more knowledgeable than us. And we can talk about what it all means and how it, plays out and what it means to Māori and what it means to, you know, have your image done and potentially commercialised. So that's sort of what we've grabbed you. So I guess the first of all, we'll just throw the ball to you and say, what are your, what are your thoughts around the story? What are your thoughts around the situation? Well, um, in, 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 the, um, in the encountering of cultures, hey, there's always this dynamic about um, what one culture expects of another. Uh, in the encounter, uh, uh, and this gentleman um, clearly, from what I see in the article, uh, claims to have an affinity for Māori and, it, and claims to uh, be um, caught in aspects of the Māori world mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, that excite him, and, and that's all well and good. H however, uh, in the Māori world, uh, using someone else's image uh, and using that image uh, of, in particular, the head. Okay. And you'll see with Rangi's head uh, and the, the mataura, the, the tāmoko, uh, gives that that head another tapu, uh, another special character. Uh, if this gentleman is caught in that um, an affinity with the Maori world, uh, seeking firstly a um, an engagement with the with the person is is the proper thing to do. And I don't know that this gentleman has done that. No, I, I think uh, it, I think it's fairly obvious he hasn't. I think that yeah. he's done, done the image, done the painting, had pushback, and then approached people afterwards. I, that's how I read the story, at least. Yes. So um, we have this again, this dynamic that in the in the Western world, um, you can take a photo of something. And that photograph is your property. Uh, and and but however, there's a there's another aspect in who does that image actually belong with, belong to? Yeah. I I I I know that there's a there's a real dynamic in the Maori world and the Western world with this 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 thing of ownership. Now, um, in Māori, there is no actual word for own. Right. Uh, because ownership um, implies that you have the control over that thing. You can sell it. You can do what you like with it. Uh, but, uh, but, 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 but in the Māori world, there's no such concept. Mm. 
you 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 uh, and and this this idea of tapu and mana. Um, let's go firstly to the the, the, the mana of this image. Uh, Rangi McLean's mana is in his image, and so to to use that mana to make money is an aspect of ownership, mm -hmm. and this this is um, this is just uh, not part of the Maori psyche. Uh, it has become part of our psyche, in fact, because of the colonization. And we do have this understanding today. Uh, but there's still that lingering of uh, not owning. Uh, and we, we have this, the same thing in the how, how we treat our land, how we treat our environment, how we treat each other. We can't own each other. We can't own the land. Because the land is us, and we belong to the land. The land belongs to us. It's an it's it's an idea of belonging, not of owning. So that implication that when you own something, you can do what you will with it. And so the the power is with the person who owns. Uh, and we have these conversations now in terms of the the three waters and uh, the other. Um, uh, land legislations, and it, it's a uh, uh, thank you to the the two Hoi people for, uh, and the Fanganui people, in that the the river is a legal entity with its own mana. It has its own personality. It has its own right of being, and that uh, the Fanganui people are the kaitiaki. They uh, look after the rights of that river for having its own being. Same with the uh, the forest, the Uruwera forest, and the two Hui people um, have have um, shown that uh, they care for the forest. They belong to the forest, and the forest belongs to them. But the forest has its own right of being. R I G H T. Yeah. And it can't be owned. It's it has its own mana. So this ownership of this image, I suggest this German gentleman doesn't understand. And if he has an affinity with things Maori, then l let him consider what he is actually doing here. He's trampling on Rangi McLean's mana. He's Do trampling on the mana of Rangi's people because that moko and that image belongs to the people. So, um, that's right. Tom, do you think, I mean, it sounds like what you're saying on some level is the transference of finances, of money, uh, yeah. is one of the, if you had it like, a, what, what is it, how do you define owning something? It sounds like with with the transference of money that gives ownership to something. If this gentleman had done this painting and say gifted it to a local, uh, you know, in Germany, but to a local museum, had no money transfer of hands, and there was a display and it was in a museum, that that sort of thing, would it be any different? Would it be any different to how it feels to Māori? Well, the, there's there's another step in this, and that step is the approach to the people to whom that image belongs, yeah. the person to whom that image belongs. And um, if Rangi, for example, uh, felt honoured with that, and uh, I mean the, the, the images of the, the kaumatua, the, the ancestors that Goldie painted, you know, they sat willingly for Goldie. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, now those paintings are, uh, are are worth millions of dollars. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, there's a uh, there's another um, aspect of that missing uh, because how do the the people, the descendants of those ancestors, benefit from the the the, the use of that image that is actually a part of their mana. Yeah. Part of their 
reason for being. So um, this this gentleman doesn't appear to have an understanding of that. And uh, uh, um, should Rangi give a permission and say, yes, uh, yeah, that would be good. Put it up in a museum so that this can be seen freely by others. But then others can take photographs of that and then use those photographs in their own way to do other things. So there's there's all of that commerciality um, and, and this this ownership of um, that again implies a, a financial gain uh, is difficult. It's very difficult. Um, I think the idea you used to use the word commercial, a commercialization of it. Yes. I think that in the law that seems very clear. You know, yes. using the likeness of someone to make money off it and basically cutting them out. I mean, and I think about in a com literal commercial sense, I couldn't put an All Blacks image on the front of my podcast saying, you know, look who supports my podcast. There is a commercial entity there. But I can see in this as well, uh, this German artist has painted, obviously it's identifiable as to who it is because of the moko and because of the, the, just the image itself, to then sell it for thousands of dollars. That seems to be quite obviously a legal situation where the the um, use of someone's likeness for financial gain, there should be a copyright claim there. I, I think I see that really clearly. I yes. guess what's more interesting to to try and work out is the kind of adherence to sort of, can I put it as the cultural respect aspects of this? Because I guess without sounding sounding harsh, someone in Germany doesn't have to pay any cultural respect at all to any other person from any other part of the world. But I guess within the art community, this guy's getting a lot of pushback from um, from people saying you should be paying adherence to that respect as well. Do you have any understanding? Has Tuhoi approached him based on the sort of legality of someone's likeness to make a financial gain? Or have they approached him in a copyright sense on our cultural property? And is there any difference of those two things in a, in, in like a legal setting? Um, I, th I think two who have done the right thing that they've um, uh, they've approached this from a um, a legal copyright question again a question of law. Yeah, but but the deeper concern for me is this appropriation by this gentleman who claims an affinity, who claims to have, have a, uh, an emotion for uh, this image and for the people, for the person portrayed and for the, the people to whom the uh, imaging belongs. And this, this, is incongruent to me. Yeah. Do you know if there's any legal recourse for like cultural appropriation? I mean, we hear about that a lot. And one of the examples the world knows about is a uh, like, don't wear Native American headdresses. That's a fairly common one that's talked about, especially because it seemed to be quite fashionable or it was at one stage. Is there any legal recourse for cultural appropriation? Or is that more a societal pushback and the only legal, only legal recourse is that? You know, financial gain off someone's likeness. I mean, do we need to have a have a have something in law where cultural appropriation can there can be some legal recourse against that if it's currently not? Thank you, Pat. That's that's um, that's something that the, um, uh, the 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 Waitangi Tribunal, yeah, in in the report um recommended that there there actually be that redress uh, but our our court systems and our uh, the legality of that is such a a maelstrom of it, it's really difficult uh, so we 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 again uh, in particular in terms of this gentle this German gentleman mm -hmm. um, appeal to the uh, the ethic of the uh, of the artist and uh, of his art that uh, cultural misappropriation is so um, morally 
uh, actually offensive. And I don't know that uh, that point has been made strongly enough to this gentleman. Um, just quietly, as you're as you're talking about this, I have had a quick look at his Instagram page, and maybe he has gotten up to play with it. I'm pretty sure this is the same account. The reason I'm saying pretty sure is it looks like the image has been taken down. Good. I mean, I, I have to double check that I've got the right person. I, I'm gone. I've gone back weeks now, but it's. It's a German artist with the same name. I'm assuming it is, uh, it is him. And it looks like perhaps he has his. Can I say his ethics? I'm not sure how to quite word it, but have kicked in, and then now appears to have been that image which had his explanation on is now taken off his Instagram. So maybe uh, Tom, maybe both the legal and perhaps the moral aspect of this conversation have come to a head, and maybe he's withdrawn his desire to sell the image of Rangi. Nice. And I've literally just found that out now. So I'll chase that up. And when we replay this conversation tonight, um, I'll confirm all of that. But it looks like maybe um, there's a positive outcome after all. Yeah. Uh, um, I, uh, in, a, in, a, in a couple of weeks, we have the, the Māori Kings, the celebration of the Māori Kings Kuruneihana. And I'm sure Rangi will be there. Yep. And, and I'm sure it'll be a, a, a topic of conversation <laughs> amongst a number of us. Yep. Uh, so that will be also very interesting how that might track. Very good. Um, from the Māori and Indigenous Studies Department, uh, Associate Professor Tom Roa, Waikato University. Tom, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today. Kia ora, Pat.